Hello, Seven Days to Die fans. This is Zith, and today we have the first in a series of tutorials to show folks how to use the SDX tool to modify the Seven Days to Die game. First, you'll see in the center of the screen here is a link, and that link will bring you to a tutorial website that we've put together to help you through this process. And as you can see here, we have a series of, of tutorial steps for you to follow so you've become an SDS expert. So again, go ahead to this link and follow along when you have a chance. I'm going to close this, show you the first page of the website, the introduction. A couple of points to pick up on the um, introduction page here. SDX is not EAC compatible. EAC is a anti-cheat mechanism that's used by Seven Days to Die. So it detects whether or not any of the files of the game, the XML or the base games, have been modified in any way. Well, we're going to be modifying ga that game file. And so um, it's very incompatible. And you need to turn that off, disable EAC, if you want to use SDX on, uh, to change a game. The other thing to note that if you do build an SDX server, and you want people to be able to connect to that, they do need certain files loaded locally on their PC. There needs to be a client install uh, for them to use an SDX server. So be aware of that as well. There's a tool called Seven Days to Die Launcher that will automate that for the players. But again, do be aware that that has to happen. So let's go ahead and get started. Under the Get Started section, we have System Requirements. And if you can see that here, it does require a bit more memory and a bit um, a system memory of 16 gigs and 2 gigs of dedicated memory to run really smoothly. Uh, I've actually run it uh, on 8 gigs before, but there will be some slowness and some stuttering as it swaps out some of the memory to the hard drive. Um, 12 is probably the minimum get away with, but again, these are our recommend recommended settings for an SDX uh, heavily modified game. The next thing we want to cover is initial setup here. You have to start off with an absolutely 100% vanilla copy of Seven Days to Die without any modifications or any changes made to it. So these next steps essentially will walk you through making a bit get that um, clean vanilla copy. We recommend that you don't um, do SDX mods against your Steam install file, that you actually make uh, some copies of that and work against the copies rather than the original. So before you can get too far with that, you need to download the SDX modding kit. We've put together a zip file called masters.zip that has all of the SDX tools um, and tutorial sample files that you will need to follow through this. So by clicking on that link, you will get a SDX modding at master zip, which you should save to your desktop or a convenient place. Let it go ahead and download. And when that finishes, we're going to unpack it to a folder on our desktop. So it seems to be almost done. And there it is. OK, so this is ready to go. And uh, you can see the file here, which we want to click on Extract. And we're, I'm going to extract it to my desktop. That'll take just a second. And you can see it popped up here in the corner. So there it is right there. So we're all done with this. So now we have this folder that contains a copy of uh, several programs and files. We have a little program called DNSpy, which we won't cover here, but is used to modify the actual assembly DLL, the main game file. We have some documentation in there, which is, again, our tutorial in a PDF form. We have some install um, installable programs here. We have a copy of Unity and a copy of the GitHub desktop. And uh, on zipper in case you need that. There are scripts that we have that we're going to use in, in Unity. It, this file is important in Unity. We've covered that in other tutorials. SDX is here. There's a program called U, Un, the Unity Asset Bundle Extractor, which is used to pull various files like meshes and textures out of the game for use in Unity or in other programs. And then we have a Unity Projects file, which is where we have our tutorial files as well for Unity and our little README. What we're going to work on today is the SDX program here. So that is the, the critical file. So the final thing we want to do here is we'll go ahead and close this. 
and this SDX modding directory, we want to go ahead and rename that directory right here to um, something like SDX modding. So let's go ahead and get rid of this master part and we'll backspace that and make it SDX modding. And if you're following along here, so we're right down to this section right about here, we've renamed it to SDX modding. So now we're going to copy that and put a copy on, um, off, hang it off the C drive. You can really put it anywhere you want, but to be able to follow along exactly as the tutorial, we put it off of the C drive. So simply right click on it and make a copy. And then navigate to your C drive. And go ahead and you can just basically right click and paste take a moment to copy that and as you see it's putting in here a SDX modding directory which is what we will go ahead and use so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next section because this is going to take a while to go ahead and copy and since I already have one it's asking me to do that so in the next section we're going to go to starting off clean and basically what this is, is that we need to make sure that there's no artifacts left over from previous seven days to die modifications. Now, even if you say, well, I've never modified seven days to die, it's a good idea for you to go through this part of the process anyways, just to make sure, because we find most of the um, problems that people uh, find in doing these type of uh, modifications are that they have leftover stuff from previous changes. So let's go ahead and make sure we start off clean. You see here, here's a link um, of where most people installed their seven days to die game into Steam, Steam apps, Uncommon. And then in that folder you see seven days to die. You may have installed this on your D drive or E drive some other way, but in most cases Steam will, will install in this particular path to the C drive. So we're going to right click on the seven days to die folder here and what we should see will be this menu here and we're going to go ahead and delete the seven days to die folder and that'll delete the game uh, proper off of our hard drive for a reinstall so you confirm that you want to delete that and then after it finishes deleting you go to steam and right click on seven days to die For those of you that you know i'm sure everyone here knows how to use steam but you go ahead and check in your library you'll see in library there's a game uh, seven days to die come down and click on property and then when properties open up, go over to local files and then click on verify the integrity of the game files. What that's going to do is look for that folder and, and check for whether the files are the right ones. In this case, you delete them all. So it's going to say there's 1,593 files that failed to validate because they're not there and they'll be reacquired. And it will go ahead and download that. That will give you a fresh install of seven days to die in that default folder. So with that done, we want to go ahead and get ourselves a clean backup. So you've completed the starting off clean section. And so we want to go ahead and make two copies of the default seven days to die game that we just went ahead and found in the Steam, Steam apps common directory. So that's easy. You go to, for those of you that know Windows well, you go down to the seven days to die directory and right click and then click copy and then come over to the um, directory where you install the SDX modding tool and create a directory called game and in that directory called game you'll go ahead and right click and paste the copy of the game into the game folder that'll go ahead and take a couple minutes because there's a lot of files there but when it's done you basically have a seven days to die folder in the game folder and you can rename that folder to something like clean install to make sure you know that that is an unvarnished copy of the original game so that's one copy next we want to go ahead and click on make a we want to make a working folder which will be the copy of the game that we actually modify with SDX so that's simply enough to go to the new folder we created clean install right click on that again copy and then in the same folder that you're in, click paste and you'll get another copy of, it says clean install copy. 
and then rename that to working. And that will be the working directory that we are going to be using for the rest of the tutorial.